Welcome back to the channel my dudes, my name is Pinkas and today we're doing another tutorial. Some of you guys have been asking and begging and yelling for a tutorial about this, my most recent post. So I'll happily oblige and uh, yeah, we can just start off by taking a look at, at the video. Alright, that's that. It's uh, pretty cool if I can admit that myself. But yeah, you guys have been asking and we're gonna be doing this. It's all gonna be in Blender. Uh, so if you have Blender, you're already set to go. Uh, if you don't have Blender, you can download it for free, which I definitely 100% recommend. I'm also gonna be using a little bit of Photoshop to create a noise texture, but I think I'm gonna upload that and post it in the video description so you don't have to use Photoshop if you don't want to. But uh, yeah, let's just uh, jump right into it. I'm gonna be starting off in Blender, or we're gonna be using Blender for like 99% of this video. Uh, but yeah, this is how Blender looks the first time you start it up. And and yeah, yeah, I'm gonna explain this like you're a noob at Blender, or I'm gonna at least try and do that. I'll probably skip some small things, but uh, you'll, you'll get a hang of it and uh, follow along. If you don't, l give me a comment and I'll try and uh, catch you up to speed. Alright, so the first thing we're gonna do is just delete this default cube, which we don't, we don't want that. Press Shift A and make a mesh plane. Uh, by the way, I have some shortcuts. Uh, I can show you these. Uh, I have this one, move shortcut G. I think it's shift G by default, but just right click, uh, change shortcut G if you want that. Uh, I also did the same with this one, rotate R as for scale. Uh, you don't have to if you don't want to, but uh, yeah, this is how I have it. And also I have this one, view frame selected as shift F. So you can just view frame selected, right click, change shortcut, shift F. And that uh, frame selected, it's really nice because when you click on this plane and shift F, you get it like in the middle of the view and the camera is rotating around it, which is really nice. But yeah, let's start. And we're gonna be doing this in Eevee, if you were wondering, but I think I'm gonna title this video Eevee render as well. But let's get into this plane. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just scale it up. Just make it a bit bigger. And then let's make the water. So we're not gonna be subdividing actually, we're just gonna be using the shading tools. So the first thing I wanna do is just make a new texture. Let's call it water. And we're gonna be using an image texture. And we're gonna be using a s uh, mapping node. Mapping. And we're gonna be using an UV map as well. So this one UV into vector and the vector into vector and then we need our picture which we're going to be making in Photoshop. I'm also going to be placing another, I'm just pressing shift A by the way, I'm sorry I'm going a bit fast. Shift A and then search to and then just typing in these nodes. Uh, so yeah, I'm also going to be adding a bump map and the color into height and the normal into normal. This is where we need our image texture, which we are gonna make in Photoshop. So I'm just opening Photoshop, making a new document. So I'm doing a like, uh, let's make it start with this and go, uh, I think I found one. Yeah, this one, film 2K. Let's go 2048 times 2048, create a new picture. And hopefully my computer isn't melting. My computer is a bit slow, so bear with me. But <laughs> Sorry about that. Just bear with me and we'll hopefully make the, make this happen. So I can just make a new layer. This is not a version of Photoshop that I'm used to, but it will, we'll figure it out. And it's a bit slow, but uh, yeah, what's going on, guys? Okay, there you go. So just press filter, render, and clouds. That's all we need. And if you don't have black and white colors enabled, you can, like, if you go back, just press D. and should be, like, make this red, blah, blah, blah. And press D. Default colors, filter, render, clouds. That was unnecessary, but you get the gist of it. So just save this as a file. Jesus Christ. Okay, new Photoshop is a bit annoying. 
But yeah, I'm just gonna save this. Alright, we got it saved. Now let's export it as a PNG and hopefully we'll end up in the same folder. No, we won't. Okay, let's find the folder again. Alright, I'm just gonna call this text for a texture and we're saving that. And I'm also gonna upload this texture on the video description so you don't have to have Photoshop if you don't have it. But let's get into Blender again and open this image texture thing to locate our picture. So I think I have it here, text. And we should start to see some kind of shapes here, which is what we're going for. All right, doesn't look half bad, but now let's make it into water. This is the rendered view, by the way. I'm clicking, this is wireframe solid uh, kind of viewport shading, I guess. Okay, and this is rendered. So let's look at rendered because we're using EV, so it doesn't really uh, take much computer power. We can start off by actually making this look more like water and doing that we'll need to decrease the roughness makes the trans transmission all the way to one and i think there's one more thing maybe you can mess around with the specular i think the ior value of water is also 1.32 not 100 percent sure there but let's just go with the flow and yeah that's about it, it looks kind of like water i'm actually going to be using this so yeah it looks like water doesn't really move or do anything, but uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna get to that. So yeah, just drag all of these bad boys and uh, shift D to duplicate, move them below and drag the UV to vector again. And then just mark all these babies and move them to the left. Now what we're gonna do is just gonna delete this bump. That was an accident on my part. Didn't wanna, didn't, didn't wanna duplicate that one. But yeah, let's go back and shift A search and tar type in mix rgb put it here and uh, take the bottom one there as well and now we can start doing some effects and uh, yeah so what we're gonna do is gonna we're gonna fake the movement of the water and by doing that we're gonna make it uh, move in two axes so it kind of looks like water it's a bit rough to explain, but you, you'll get the gist of it. Let's go and actually add a uh, dope sheet that I think we're probably going to use. So just, you saw what I did there, just clicking, easy peasy. But yeah, turn that one to one, that's keyframe number one. And we can go on the X axis plus I to insert keyframe and then go away at the end and then make it 0.9999 and an I again. All right, and then we should have movement and we do. Doesn't look too bad. Now we're gonna do the same in the Y axis. So we'll grab this one and we're gonna go to the first keyframe. And in, instead of zero, we'll type negative 0.5, I think, yeah. And instead of I, we can actually use right click, insert keyframe. It's the same thing, I'm just gonna show you two ways to do it. But yeah, let's go to the end, 250, and type in point, no zero, no, or no negative, but point uh, 0.499, and then right click, insert keyframe. It's the same if we do it with I or whatever, but we should be able to see. Yeah, there's some added movement here because now it's moving in two axes. So it's both moving this way and to the right. And if we watch in the rendered view, it doesn't look half bad, but that's because there's no light in the scene. So we're actually looking at nothing in a way. So we, if we grab this light, we should be able to see something more, uh, but not really. We can see the shape of the light here, but this is not what we want. We want something more, more visible. So I'm just gonna save this and we're gonna be going back to layout. And let's just go in rendered mode. I mean, come on. Now the next step is to grab an HDRRI. And that is a big picture that uh, kind of behaves like a background. So go to HDRI, HDRI Haven, uh, which is a place where you can grab them for free. We're gonna be doing a nighttime HDRI, I want some stars, I want something cool. I saw a couple of cool ones back on the top there. But I think, actually, let's go with Blue Lagoon at night. Dirty Lens, okay, now, okay, let's just grab one of these boys at the top here. So, uh, Moonless Golf, let's grab this one. Download that bad boy in 4K. And uh, let's see if I can find the right folder though. 
there you go and just i'm just going to add it in the photoshop folder and download and yeah it's already downloaded so let's go back into blender and instead of going into shading let's go to the world settings properties uh actually let's go to the shading properties sorry my bad uh so instead of object make it world right here and uh, uh on the right we can select or actually we can just do it right here now let's do it here so on surface go to that's that's all right but on color go to environment texture and here we'll click open and then we'll find our hdri which i think i have there moonless golf and you have to wait a couple of seconds and now you can see that the the background kind of reflects on this surface or maybe it doesn't we'll need to actually change some settings here and enable all those i think yeah let's just enable them all uh, yeah we got some reflections now we get some reflections so we just i don't think you have to enable them all but at least screen space reflections is probably good to do i just like all of them uh but yeah i'm gonna rotate the um the whole scene a bit so i have this add-on called a mapping node i think oh i don't actually okay never mind uh, so what we want to grab is a UV coordinate, I think, texture coordinate, is that it? Yeah, and a mapping, is it a mapping node? Yeah, I think it's a mapping node. So go to object, vector, vector to vector. And now we should be able to rotate. We can actually go to generated vector, I think. I'm not sure, it's the same thing, probably. So now we can rotate the HDRI, which is really cool. So I'm just going to undo that. And we're gonna rotate in the Z, no, in the Y, no, in the X axis. So I want some light, I just want some stars, you know. Uh, so just kind of align this with the scene. And let's see if we can find some nice stars. Also, this is way too bright, the background is way too bright. So let's go to background and strength. Let's go with 0.2. I'm not half bad. What about 0.02? Maybe a bit weak, so let's 0.5. Doesn't look half bad but let's move on to the uh, the moon or the sun the outgrown sun the the wave wave sun and the way i make that is just pre pretty simple just go to shift a add a mesh add a uv sphere and go in the settings here and make it uh four times four times the amount of rings move it back a bit let's have it over here by the edge of the water and just shift F to move over, over over to it. Right click on that bad boy and click shade smooth. Then we'll need to add a cube. So just shift A, mesh cube, and then move it over here. Then press S to scale and get it somewhere. Make sure it covers the whole thing. And uh, yeah, something like that perhaps. Then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna move the camera behind this uh, sun is just clicking on this axis and using this one to move around a bit and let's grab this bad boy move him down so this is what we're going to be using to make the cuts so i'm just pressing s for scale there scaling it down in the z axis moving it down a bit and maybe scaling it a bit down a bit more there you go then press tab to go into edit mode like a real professional and you should have all edges selected if you accidentally press like, oh, I just selected this one and not everyone else, just press L to select all of them. Or you can manually use this. But yeah, uh, just press L and every linked one should be... Okay, maybe not. Just... <laughs> Sorry about that. Just press 1 and press L and every one should be selected. Okay, there you go. Move the camera behind again. And uh, is this behind? This is behind. This doesn't really matter anyways. But yeah, press Shift D and then right click and then G to move and you have like it. Okay, maybe not. Shift D and yeah, okay. And then right click, move it up. Why isn't it like what? It should be duplicating though. Why doesn't it work with right click? Uh huh. Okay, that's kind of weird. But, uh, oh, never mind. I have proportional editing on. Shift D, right click, move it up. There you go. And then the same again. Shift D, right click, and move it up. And you know what? 
I did a mistake. So the first one, just press S and move it down in this axis and press L on this one, delete it, we don't need it. And L on this one again. Sorry about messing that up, but you probably understand what I was trying to do there. Uh, so yeah, let's just get the camera correct again. So I want the second one to be a bit smaller or thinner and then shift D to duplicate again, move it up and then S for scale, make it a bit thinner. And should we do one more? I think maybe we should. Shift D, right click, move it up with G and then scale it down in that axis. And then press A to get all of them. Move them down a bit perhaps. And then I'm just gonna make sure that the, like the holes in between them are kind of equal. And of course we duplicated a lot of these bad boys because I did so many mistakes. So I'm um, hopefully, yeah, I think we got it. All right. So uh, yeah, I think this looks all right. Maybe this one is to go a bit lower. I think actually all of them need to go a bit lower if we want to correct Vaporwave Sun. But yeah, that's all of them in there. So now we can actually make the sun. So click on the sphere, go to modifiers, add a boolean. And on object, just press this uh, cube and press apply and then move the cube away. There you go. You get the sun. Doesn't look half bad. I mean, looks kind of nice. Now let's make the material for this bad boy. Let's get into shading and change from world to object. Make a new one. Let's call it the sun. I'm just going to delete this principal shader by clicking, dragging over it and clicking delete. Shift A, search, add an emission texture and uh, just duplicate it. And then I think we need a mix shader and uh, one into there and one into there. And then we need a color ramp. Make sure to grab that color into fac for factor, I believe. Now let's get a separate separate X, Y, Z and grab the Z axis into fac. And then the last one, I think we need a UV coordinate, texture coordinate. I think that's what we need to go object into vector. That should be correct, I believe, not 100% sure. But yeah, let's go with the color here, make it pink. Am I seeing pink color? I'm not. Why, why am I not seeing? Oh, yeah. never mind. My bad. Let's get, get the shader to surface. Now we're getting the pink color and make the white one. I think Vaporwave is kind of like white and blue. So let's do something with that. And we can go back into rendered view actually. So yeah, maybe turn up the strength a bit like three and three. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, it looks kind of cool. And we can also use this color ramp to kind of change where those lines are and you're gonna want to use to or you're gonna want to change this into B spline to get the best result I believe uh, you can use B spline or uh, ease is probably one of the better ones to get those smooth uh, transitions I guess you call them but yeah something like this doesn't look too bad I'm, I'm gonna use B spline I think that's one that one is my favorite but yeah, something like that. Uh, don't want to move the black one too much. I think the white one is, I'm not sure. You can add like a gray one if you want, but this doesn't look too bad, I feel like. But now let's just uh, go, go back and change the camera. So we'll have a camera in the scene here already. Uh, if we can find it, I'll just click on it. But I got my shift F, you know, I can move. So let's move the camera so that we can see the sun and you should probably go in layout and just drag across here to create another scene or another screen I guess you can call it click here to toggle camera view which means we're inside the camera and then we can use this one to move the camera like a real professional so I'm just using G and R rotating and dragging around it's a bit tilted but <laughs> you know I'm a bit tilted. Let's just make these even numbers, 90, 0, 180. I know my math, you know, so I know my even angles, degrees, whatever. Uh, something like this, perhaps, doesn't look too bad. And you can see the sun looks kind of weird because it's in 3D space. So it's kind of like got this long 
oval shape here in the middle. Uh, we'll fix that by just moving it back a bit and just scaling up it up uh, across and then maybe moving it a bit more back. Maybe that's not the best idea. I don't think that's the best idea. Something like this, I think, looks pretty nice, if I can say so myself. Let's move the camera back and then move the sun back and then scale the sun up again. Just scale it up with the circle there. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe press G and grab it and take it up a bit. I mean, we're getting somewhere. I feel like, yeah, absolutely. So now it's time to add the statue. I'm just gonna go on my Chrome tab here and this is the page I use for statues. Uh, they're free, they're really good quality, high quality, and yeah, it just looks amazing. It's uh, the Danish Museum for Art, I believe, no, I'm 100% sure. And also these are posted with the CC0 Creative Commons license, which means you can use them yourself and for commercial commercial products, I think, or commercial, yeah, commercial products or things. So this should be in the free domain. You should be able to use this, but uh, just gonna put a disclaimer. Don't take my word for it. If you get sued, I'm not, that's not my fault. Uh, but yeah, let's grab something like, uh, what do we wanna see here? This guy with the club, perhaps? Is he kinda cool? Let's go to the first page. I don't know, like this guy, no arms. You can stop. Oh, this guy, thinking. Yeah, that's something I want. So just press download. And uh, I'm just gonna put it in my blender folder here. Just save it. There's a lot of ads here, but uh, let's ignore that for the time being. And I'll meet you back when this statue has downloaded. All right, the statue is done. We're back into blender and I'm just gonna go in the middle here, press shift A. And I'm not gonna do that actually. I'm gonna go into file import and it's an STL file. So import the STL file. Find the folder where we downloaded the statue. This is where I found it. And press import. It's a bit, those statues are can be kind of big in like pixels and polygons. And uh, there's no pixels in 3D, but uh, polygons. So it'll mail take some time for your computer to load that stuff. I know it takes that for mine because mine is really slow. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll see something soon. All right, I think my statue is inside. There it is. So it's really huge compared to the scene. Uh, the scene. So we can start off by making the like rota rotation object inside the the statue. And that is done by going to transform set origin origin to geometry. There you go, not bad. And then press this yellow square and just drag all the scale and press point O to enter. I think that should be small enough. Move it across, put them into the scene. Oh, it's a bit like it's floating. Okay, drag him down. There he is. And we can move him across and maybe rotate him on the Y axis? No, okay, on the X axis, if I'm not. Oh, okay, it's a Z axis. Of course, it's the last one. Maybe math is not my strongest suit. But yeah, let's go back in the camera, see how this looks. He's a bit close, let's move him. Move him back. Oh, I, can, I think we can delete this light. We don't We don't really need that. So yeah, let's move him around. I think I wanna make the, no, I wanna make him smaller actually. So like point, just drag and kind of tag all three. Make him half that size, 0 0.1. That's a bit small. 0 0.13, that's like a f nice even number. Uh, move him forward a bit, make him in the middle there. Also, I'm gonna change up the. No, never mind. All right, so that looks kind of cool, kind of kind of nice. I'm not gonna be digging into the material on this guy because I'm really bad at making realistic statue materials. That is something I'm gonna need to learn for myself as well. We can mess around with like the specular, the roughness, probably some roughness. Or maybe not roughness and make him really specular, so make him like glassy, shiny, some subsurface. I mean, you can do what you want here. I'm not gonna, I'm really bad at this, so we're just gonna make something happen. 
Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, roll with this. And then I'm gonna do the light thing that I did on, on my Instagram post. And it's really easy, it's just a triangle. And go on mesh, go on torus, I believe. Type in major segments, we only need three. And then minor segments, I think 12 is probably okay. Uh, minor radius, let's make it uh, 05. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. We can make this one a bit smaller, so like 0.5. And then this one, 0.02. Yeah, okay, that's probably good. So let's move that across to him, take it up there, rotate it a bit, and I'm really bad at math once again, so let's just... Uh, it's kind of uneven right now, but uh, we'll, we'll make something happen. So yeah, something like this perhaps. This isn't this isn't great, but <laughs> let's move. Uh, come on, let's make this even. Kind of okay. I can just do the numbers here instead. So like ninety zero 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 zero, and then we kind of wanna. Is this something we want? I mean, yeah, you can just mess around and do whatever you want with this make it look kind of cool maybe a bit closer maybe a bit bigger so like scale of 1.5 i don't know you can do whatever you want and just press this go to uh, texture press new and make an emission make it i don't know pink and make it strength of like i don't know eight go back into the camera and you know we got something and you can use space to press play that's pretty close to what I made. I, I guess, I believe. We can try and move the sun a bit closer, actually. See, see what happens. If we get more reflection in like the bottom here. But yeah, this is pretty close. The only thing is that the water moves really quickly. And that's a bit of a problem. So let's go into, let's go into shading here where we had the keyframes. Uh, so what I would recommend uh, is r right now the the reason why we use these numbers is because it loops so actually it should loop almost perfect perfectly and uh, let's just see if it does oh it actually it doesn't so we made the mistake uh, and that's because these keyframes are actually bezier I believe so they are they're they're slow at the start and they're uh, slow at the end. So just tag in both and right click, go to interpolation mode and click linear. So now you're at a constant speed. So they should be looping, I believe. Let's just check, and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it slows up a bit, but I think that's close to looping. Yeah, I think it, yeah, that's good enough, good enough. So if you want, you can make this like animation longer so go on the camera settings here on the on the output properties make it end i don't know like 500 and then move this one across and we can go to we can just drag this one to page or frame 500 this is probably not the smartest way to do it but you know i'm not i'm not a smart man i'm not sure what i'm doing but yeah so now the water is a bit slower you can kind of time that if you're doing making it with music you can kind of time that with the music uh but yeah this is how i made it this is what i did i think that's about it we can do like one render just to, just to see how it looks uh but yeah i'm pretty sure that's everything uh here's an example you can probably make like the water a bit like uh surfacing like all the time uh but yeah, i can make it a bit larger and longer out there see how that looks yeah i don't know you can just experiment you can just experiment see what happens maybe undo a couple of times Control z and uh test around but i'm almost I, i'm feeling kind of happy with this i think maybe we need to turn down the background a bit to so go to world and make it i don't know like 0 0.02 that looks a lot cooler at least uh, but yeah, you can just experiment with this, make it however you want, and when you're done, just click output, make it in a nice folder, and 
basically just click render and render animation and will and it will render every frame but yeah uh that's about it if you want to know how i do my filters and like my retro effects uh, i have other tutorials for that i'll do that in after effects uh but yeah you can take a look at that but yeah anyways thanks for watching this tutorial i hope it was kind of helpful. I also want to give a shout out to the guy that made the water tutorial that I watched. Uh, I can't remember his name, but uh, but the video is in the description. So if you want a more deeper look into how to make that water texture and why it's made like that, go check out his video. I'm going to link it in the description. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this random tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.